Sweet surrender as I love, serve, and remember. I was listening to this talk by a guy named Sean Acor, Acor, and he was talking about when he was seven, he was playing with his little sister who was five, and they were on top of a bunk bed and their parents had asked them to play quietly in the room while they were taking a nap. So they had his army guys all in Tonker toy trucks all lined up on one side of the bed, and then her unicorns and fairy animals on the other. And they're like battling out, and he said, somehow, I don't know how it happened, she got pushed off the bed. <laughs> <laughs> said, it's, it's, been, it's not resolved yet who, how that actually happened. But he said, she landed on all fours, and what's interesting is that one of her fours had a cast because the week before, he had pushed her out of the way to save her from a pretend sniper bullet. <laughs> so now she's landed on all four, and he said, I could see her whole face, like, about to scream in pain. Just like, and he knows he's about to get in big trouble, so he has to put a stop to it as a seven-year-old. So he's like, don't cry, don't cry, Amy, don't cry. He said... Do you realize what you did? You landed on all fours. Humans don't land on all fours. I just think you might be a unicorn. <laughs> and he said, I could see in her face. She's like, I'm in pain, but I could be a unicorn. <laughs> and she didn't know which way to go. She said, I'm a unicorn, and jumped right back on the bed and started playing again. The power of play, of imagination, we could say that her authentic and factual response should have been pain. That would have been an honest response. I'm in pain, I want to cry. But we can say it's just as authentic to say, I want to play. And that that play is a more of a magnetic attraction, natural attraction, not because she should, but because it was fun, because it was playful. She wasn't saying, I want to, I want to pretend I don't feel pain anymore. The focus wasn't on pain at all. I want to play. We have this natural attraction to delight. He was giving this talk, this guy, Sean, who told the story, uh, and I'm going to post it on my Facebook because it's just a totally, it's 12 minutes of total delight. But he puts up a graph. He, he, he said he went to a Harvard against, he didn't have, they didn't have the money, he didn't, they didn't think he could go in the last minute, he got a scholarship and could go. And he said, one of the things I learned is you never start a talk with a graph, so what I'd like to do now is start with this graph. <laughs> <laughs> and he has this graph, and he starts talking, but he goes, well, actually, I just made it up. That's not real at all. <laughs> but then he spent much of his talk talking about the graph, even acknowledging that it wasn't real, but he kept referring to it like he was like, oh, you know, you could sort of see what he was saying by his graph that wasn't real. And you could see this is a person who was completely at home in the realm of play. Like he wasn't, he wasn't limited by facts. He was, and he wasn't trying to pretend the facts weren't real. He, real. he was just saying, there's just so much more possibilities. Let's play with them. And he just had this facility to move through um, uh, this creative expression. And it reminded me, and, and he's, and, and, well, it reminded me of what Joseph Chilton Pierce, have it, has anyone here heard of Joseph Chilton Pierce? Oh, so, so um, he's, he worked a lot with developmentally children. He was very interested, like he wrote The Magical Child, The Crack of the Cosmic Egg. He was very big of the natural childbirth and, and um, nursing. And um, so I was very interested in his books, obviously, when I was ra raising children. And he wrote a book called The Biology of Transcendence and how everything that we are experiencing as ch children support us as adults. He said, but the place I got stuck was play. I couldn't get, he said, I had the research out, and I, I said, I, and he tells this experience of just, he said, I reams of all my notes, and I had them laying out on the floor, and I was exhausted. It was like two in the morning, and I just can't, I still can't get it. Like, what is exactly, kids play, it's like they have to play, but what does it have to do with being an adult? And as he's just sort of, he finally gives up, because he's just, his mind is, He's done all the research, he's done all the thinking, and nothing's really coming. And he gets shot into another state of consciousness where he experiences, suddenly he's in the cosmos, and he experiences himself flying through the air. And what he realizes, he was a ball, and God was playing catch with him from one end of the cosmos <laughs> to the other. 
And it was just for the pure delight of play, for the joy of play that, in fact, when we realize and recognize that the consciousness, the, 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 the beingness of spirit is play. In Hinduism, there's a thing called Satchitananda, which is, this is the ground, so it's beingness, the great being, the being itself. It's, so it's made of three things, beingness, consciousness, and bliss. That, that is the core essence of the world. And so the question that we heard in the reading today that, that why I, I, I hadn't actually heard it out loud before, it was a very complicated reading. So, but it, the core essence of what Sri Aurobindo was asking was if as spirit, being everything, is already completely fulfilled, it doesn't need anything, it doesn't desire anything. It doesn't need to be more free. It doesn't need more of anything. It's already completely fulfilled and whole and everything. Why would this presence of pure beingness create form? And Sri Aurobindo's answer, and I think a lot along in the theology answer is for delight. That's why we are here is for the joy of expression Think about when children play. They're not doing it for a reason. They're doing it for the joy of it, to play. There's no agenda to it. What if we started looking at life with a little bit more of a playful spirit rather than this intense purposefulness? Life is made to, of delight, and we feel more delight when we express. Think of anything that you express, whether it's creative arts of any, of any kind, or an athletic something, or a great conversation, anything by yourself or with other people. Just the very mere act of expression, that creative act of expression, is where the joy comes in. Where you start to feel, all the delight you feel comes to be realized. So form and the absolute, the relative and the absolute, become one in that creative expression. I thought about that with Ramana Maharshi because that's one thing Ramana Maharshi was saying. One of his pieces of advice to humanity was stop worrying about what your purpose is. He said, you're already living your purpose. Just by being you, just by expressing your you-ness, you are living your purpose. You don't have to try to do anything. And it wasn't really until today that I was thinking about this, like, oh, everything we do, like having purpose, having meaning, all of it is to is the, 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 the idea that without having a purpose, I have no meaning. But if you notice, children don't see that. Children don't see themselves as being meaningless. It doesn't even occur to them. They just have a natural sense of meaningfulness. And whether it's in difficult, challenging situations or a wonderful, harmonious home or anything in between the two, children will find a way to play, to imagine, to create, because they have to. It's their nature. They're so in tune with it, not to get anything other than the mere joy of playing and creating. This past weekend, Jerry Seinfeld came out with a movie called Frost. And... It has gotten, I would say, mediocre to terrible reviews. It's a very, apparently, a silly, very silly movie, and either you get, get caught up in the silliness or you don't. But it was so interesting listening to, because he's got a movie to, to sell. He's been in a lot of interview shows. And he said something that, was, that really made me stop and think, as we're thinking about play. The, the guy asked him, what, what do you want your legacy to be? Do you want it to be Seinfeld, or as a great comedian, great father? What, what, where do you place your value? And he said, I don't care about my legacy. I have no interest in my legacy. I just have it. My only interest is living now fully as I am, and to constantly play with that and express that and bring happiness to my life and to the people who's ever's in the room. And sometimes I fail and sometimes I don't, but I don't track, track it down to how important I am. I'm not trying to be important. And think about that. Think about so much of ambition or desire. One 
is I want to express myself, but the other one is I want to be successful. Because why? Because I become more important. I become, my life becomes more meaningful. I'll have more of an impact on other people. And it becomes really self-conscious. It becomes very self-absorbed. And I, I remember thinking about that when I first became a minister because prior to this, m most of the roles that I played were, was background. I didn't like being in leadership. I didn't want to be in leadership. So it was such a drastic thing. And I remember writing this. I'm like, this could be such an egotistical drive. Like, when I get there, like, how are people liking me? W you know, just sort of this self, th it's a really tricky thing. And I, because this is nothing compared to what he was doing in terms of having a world audience with Seinfeld. And he said he could have never made it if he didn't have a daily meditation practice. He's been meditating for decades. He said it's what kept him sane because you get lost. You can get lost in a human. This is really important. You're important. You are so important. This is your legacy to the world. He said, does not matter? None of that matters. None of it matters. The only thing matters is when I'm with people, are we happy and are we, try are we looking to create and express in a way that makes us happy. So what the what thing that makes him happy in creating is different than what other people, but are we engaged in those activities that bring us joy for no reason other than joy? <laughs> like no agenda. And I was thinking, because I keep going back to kids, because kids do it so effortlessly. And I'm thinking, this is when kids are playing, they're not worrying about what, what's my purpose going to be. We ask them a lot as adults, and I'm guilty of this, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because like, that's what's important. So we put this energy on it. But I don't think they cared. They just they, they like playing. And what I noticed, especially I, since I had a boy, that a lot of the things that they wanted to be when they grew up were things that had cool uniforms. <laughs> so like the police officer or fireman. Um, Julian's first desire of what he wanted to be when he grew up was a crossing guard because there was a, he had big ambitions because there was a crossing guard across the street who had a cool fluorescent vest and he wanted to wear one of those vests and then he wanted to be Jason Kendall who was the catcher on the A's because he, he loved the, the catcher's mask and the whole outfit like kids just want to play and be in different uniforms and play different roles. They're, they're not like trying to latch on like this is my purpose and I'm going to show up this way and that's what's going to make me valuable and important. They don't have any of that. They're so free. I'll play this. I'll play, I'll dress up as, and it's not just for Halloween or parties. They just do it because it's fun and it's playful. So I've been, I was thinking about that and I thought, you know, Jack might have something about this that might um, support us on this whole idea of costumes and just playing. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> I'm with 450 children every week, and I've been doing it for almost 25 years now. So uh, anyway, so we like to play, you know, and, and uh, it really brings me a lot of joy. And, and, I, and so I ask them, and I'll ask you, so... What do you think that I had? Let, let, let's, play, let's play this game now. What do you think I had for breakfast this morning? Cereal. Cereal. No, no, no. Nope. Toast, Toast and coffee. Nope. 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 No. Here, I'll give you a clue. Cereal. 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 So what I thought, like we can all like be bananas. So if you if you want to, you can stand up. We're all gonna be bananas. Okay, so this is what my banana looks like. Let me see your banana. <clears throat> Peel the one side of your banana. Peel the other side of your banana. Form your one side of the banana. Form the other side of the banana. Okay, now let's peel the banana and peel the banana, and let's go bananas, go bananas, go bananas, go bananas, go bananas, freeze. Let's form, 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 form bananas, form, 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 form bananas, peel, 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 peel bananas, and peel, 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 peel bananas, then go, 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 go bananas, and go, 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 go bananas, and freeze. Oh, I want some mango now. 
and dance the tango. <laughs> Let's form, 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 form a mango. Form, 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 form a mango. Peel, 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 peel a mango and peel, 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 peel a mango and dance. Dance, dance, dance the tango, dance, 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 dance the tango and freeze. Hmm, I'm thinking I want some orange juice. I'm gonna form an orange and squeeze the orange and form, 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 form an orange and form, 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 form an orange and peel, 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 peel an orange and peel, 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 peel an orange and squeeze, 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 freeze. Hmm. I'm thinking I want some ketchup. Hmm. And that's made of tomatoes, so I can form a tomato. But I'm having a problem with the ketchup bottle, so I have to <laughs> the ketchup. Let me do this. Do this together. <laughs> the ketchup. Let's do it with me. <laughs> the ketchup. You'll do it. You'll have fun if you do the words, too. Here we go. Form, 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 tomato. Form, 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 tomato and peel, 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 tomato and peel, peel. Peel, peel, tomato, and <laughs> the ketchup, <laughs> the ketchup, and freeze. Hmm. I'm thinking I want some guacamole. So I am going to form an avocado and guac, guacamole, ole. It's Cinco de Mayo, right? Guac, guacamole, ole. Here we go. Form, form, form avocado. Form. Form, form avocado and peel, peel, peel avocado and peel, peel, peel avocado and guac, 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 guacamole, guac, 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 guacamole, ole! Okay, sit down. <laughs> Jack Quigley and forming a banana. We just wore a banana, a mango, an orange, a tomato, and an avocado in less than five minutes. <laughs> we are awesome. Thank you, Jack. So how much fun we had in that is a, has a lot to do with our self-consciousness. So if you see when kids do this, they just let go. Like they're like crazy. And even Julian, because he grew up with Jack as a music teacher, even if we do it now, he just has a ball with it because there's a freedom. And so, so much of play and having fun is the lack of self-consciousness. Well, we're not constantly focusing on ourselves. So that doesn't mean play doesn't, that, so we can have fun like that and that's silly, but we can have serious fun too. I was thinking about, so uh, when I, I love playing volleyball, and when I went to college, I went, on, I went to Boston University, and I decided to go as a walk-on to their volleyball team. I wasn't interested in playing in the games. I was way too timid, and it was way too much pressure. I just wanted to be on the bench and be able to go to the, the practices all week long, because I love volleyball without the pressure, without the expectation. So after the end of the first week, the coaches came over and said, we really like what we see, and we'd love you to be on our starting team, of our varsity team. And I left and never came back. <laughs> I literally, for two years, avoided the sports complex because I was afraid to run into them, because I was embarrassed that I never came back. And, um, but I still wanted to play volleyball, so I played intramural volleyball. So I show up, and I'm thinking it's going to be at least pretty good volleyball, but it was really bad. <laughs> they had no idea how to play volleyball, and I had to adjust. So there was serious volleyball. That was fun. I didn't like the people looking at me, but I liked the fun of it. But then I found how to be silly and playful, and that was just as fun, a totally different type of fun. But I was laughing. I would go every time. I had no agenda at all other than having a great time with my teammates. I used to tease and torment the people on the other side. It was just fun. It was playful. Nobody cared. Everyone, I realized I was with people who could care less about whether they were, they were good at volleyball. And so that made it so fun and playful. So playful, um, when we're, we can be silly and we can be serious, we can be really want to be good at something. I think of Jack, you know, when he plays in his gigs, he loves playing with musicians who are really good and they get, their, they, they hone their craft. And then he goes in with his children and can be completely silly. 
So, so fun has a whole range, spectrum of how we have fun. We can have fun by ourselves, very quiet fun. Or it could be loud and gregarious. So there's all sorts of dynamics around fun, but the thing that fun has is you're not self-conscious. You're not worried about what other people are thinking, and most importantly, you're not judging yourself. We know about judgment, right? So if, if you're judging me, and I don't, I'm not judging me in the way that you're judging me, I won't pick up on it. But if you're judging me and I'm already judging myself for that, I'm going to really tune in to how you're judging me because I already feel it. So the key is our own self-judgment. Do we feel a judgment with ourselves? And so having play is allowing that playful spirit to show up and not judge ourselves, that we are safe within our own being, that we are not going to hurt ourselves with our own limitations and criticism. And that, that really is how we learn how to play and have fun as adults. Because as adults, everything has become so serious. We have so many responsibilities that are important responsibilities. It's not made up. It's not for fun, you know, with our job and paying bills and being parents and being children of, of, of aging parents and, and having children and friendships, all of it. Money, all these things, health, all these things start to become really serious. So it's an interesting thing. So how can we develop this idea of play in a very serious world as adults? Because children don't have, to have, don't have all those responsibilities. Well, it's interesting because one of the things that lit my fire to want to do this series is there's a book called The Power of Fun. And I was watching the author, Catherine Price, and I, 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 giving a talk. And I'm like, this is so not fun. <laughs> Because it's, it, but she points that out. It's very hard to say, I want to have fun now. I am going to play now and have a good time. I am not going to judge myself and I am free. That's a very hard thing to do. She said, you can't plan fun. You can't say, I'm gonna have fun from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's, it's the surest way not to have fun, right? The way, when you're trying too hard. And that's why this whole word of flirting came up as I was looking at this month of flirting with fun. Because when we flirt with something, we're not going right at it. We don't have an agenda. Like, if you're trying to pick someone up at a bar, you might have a pickup line because you have an agenda. You want something from them. Flirting, it's a spontaneous lightness where you don't want anything from that person. There's no expectation. You haven't gone to the next step of commitment or whatever is down the line. And so you can flirt with a freedom, with a lightness of being, because play is a lightness of being. I have this on my wall. Um, so on one of my altars, I have this big portrait of Jesus, but it's the laughing Jesus. Has anyone seen that picture of the laughing Jesus? Only a few of you. Yeah, look it up. It's really fun. So I have a, it, it's bigger than just laughing. And then I have two pictures of Shunra Suzuki and Yogananda, and they both, I made sure I had pictures of them with smiles on their faces. The, the irony of that it's because it's my altar, it's where I go to, not just when I'm feeling joyful, but when I'm crying and I'm so upset about something that's deeply painful or angry and full of rage, and I'll go and I start talking, and it's so annoying because all they do is laugh at me. <laughs> and, I, and that will make me mad too. This, that's just, uh, no, have compassion for me. I am blah, and I'll just keep going on and on and on until I finally get drained, and I'm like, yeah, this kind of, like, it helps free me of the intensity series, because I keep thinking, oh, that's the cosmic bliss. That's the satchanan, such how you say the word, <laughs> of existence, consciousness, and bliss. That's the state they're all in. They're not all upset. They're in this place of pure joy and lightness of being, and as deep and powerful as my emotions are in that moment, just to remember that, my, that I, what I made in the image and likeness of bliss that I am made in the image and likeness of absolute delight, not just partial delight, absolute delight. Absolute delight, that's my main, that's what that reminds me of. So no matter what's happening in this human realm, and I'm not saying we don't work through the stuff and the emotions, this isn't a, a, an advocacy for a spiritual bypass, but it is a powerful reminder 
of who I am, of who we are, and what we, this whole world is made in the image and likeness of delight and of play. So as we remember that this week, my invitation to you, and this invitation has no follow-up. There's no report card. I won't be asking you about it. You're not doing it for any reason, only if you feel like it. Flirt with play. Whenever it pops up, let it be spontaneous. Don't plan it. Just if there are a moment, just be playful. Where you feel you don't have to commit to anything. Just flirt. Flirt with a little bit. Oh, this could be fun. Oh, I might just do this because it's fun. Just flirt with it. Jerry, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry is the biggest flirt ever. And look how much joy she has from life. But with no agenda. There's nothing she wants. The thing, the, what makes her flirting fun is because you know, like, she's always flirting with my husband, okay? Let's just, let's just, let's just get it out there. <laughs> but it's free. There's no agenda. She flirts with everyone's husband, by the way. Just <laughs> it's really, she has no boundaries. But <laughs> but that's what makes it so fun, because it's playful. There's nothing behind it other than play. So I invite us all to be in this wonderful, playful, flirty spirit, and just for no agenda, for no reason, just for the joy of it, because that's what we were made to be, joyful. Express yourself for no reason other than for the joy of it. Yeah? yeah. Let's do it. Let's pray. We're what? Yes. We all, oh, sorry. <laughs> she said we all get to flirt with Jack now. <laughs> all right. So we just give thanks for the power and the presence of delight. We give thanks that we are made in the image and likeness of delight. That's the entire cosmos was created from, through, and as delight. And with that comes drama and challenges and problems. All of that is happening, happening in this world. But behind all of it, behind all of it, we return to that wholeness that pure consciousness of being, of bliss. And we just make it welcome. We just welcome it. Just that moment where we can touch it for those moments. And we acknowledge when those moments happen. We celebrate and give thanks for those moments when they happen, whether they're by ourselves or with other people, whether it's just a fleeting moment or whether it's sustained over time. We just enjoy it. We celebrate it because we know that is where life becomes the most real. When we are in delight, we are in our most pure and true nature. And so we see ourselves from this place of delight, of compassion, of without judgment, where we are safe in our own mind. We let go, we let go, we let go, we relax, we relax, we relax. God is on the field, love is on the field, the one power, the one power, the one presence, the one delight is right here, right now, animating itself through and as us, discovering new possibilities, new solutions, new ways of seeing, new ways of doing things, because it is free and unlimited in its ability to play and see infinite possibilities. We are never limited by the past, we are never limited by any stuck habit patterns. We are free in this moment to create a new, to put on a new play a new form, a new way of expressing in this very moment, in all situations. We are the creators of the universe. We are at play even now. Spirit is at play through all of us, and we are willing to allow that play to pour through us in new, beautiful, infinite possibilities. possibilities. Thank you for the imagination that animates us, the expression that, that expresses through us. Thank you for the light and the love that we are now. And as we see and know this for our life here and now, we can see and know this for this entire planet where it feels so dense and dark and where there aren't possibilities, we hold into the unlimited possibilities of delight. The unlimited possibilities of play. The unlimited possibilities of imagination. For this is who we are. And we give thanks, we give thanks, and we give thanks yet again. We release this now into the world, into the energy of delight, knowing that as this word is spoken, it is done. And I invite you all to join me now in saying, and so it is. Amen. I 
walk in God in all I do. I walk in God in all that I say.